Hello everybody and welcome back to another video and in today's video we are going to be discussing on how to choose waves and the best waves to choose in the situations that you are in. I've seen a few comments come through on how to choose waves and the best waves to go on in different situations. And I thought I would just do this video and help you guys a little bit on choosing waves and exactly which waves you should be going on and which waves you shouldn't be going on. Now in saying this again, and I must stress how important this is, but experience holds a lot in this decision that you are gonna make. And I think that you guys need to understand exactly when and where the best situations are to go out and to get waves, especially if it becomes a reef break or heavier situations that you're gonna put yourself into. So when we talk about choosing waves and especially when these waves are gonna be all different, I mean, none of us are gonna ever ride the same wave twice unless we're in a wave pool and you really need to kind of figure out exactly how the waves break at your local spot and exactly which waves are the ones to take. For me, I've been doing this for a very long time and I can sort of see how waves are gonna turn. I know the different places that I go and surf and which waves are going to be best in certain situations. None of these waves that I surf are the most readable waves because they're all on sand bottoms. When it comes to a reef bottom where you kind of know which angle works best for that reef, this becomes a much easier situation and you can start to see the waves bending at the end and you know which ones are gonna hold open or which ones are gonna close out. When I was in the water yesterday, this was something that really kinda of came to me and I was like, okay, wow. Different waves break in different situations and I don't think a lot of people really understand exactly the dynamics of sand bottom breaks and which waves are going to be best. For me, I choose a wave that looks good and that has good angles on it and a good look down the line. Now in saying this, this is experience where I don't really have to think about this too much and it just comes to me as in, I look down the line, see which kind of section is gonna pop up and know exactly at the start of the wave what my options are, either to get a barrel or to do a backflip out of the barrel or what situation is gonna arise when I see it. None of this stuff is much thinking for me. It is more a muscle memory as I can just kind of take off, look down the line, see different sections and know what to do on those sections. This is from a lot of surfing. It's not just something that you can pick up and just kind of think repetitively on, okay, well, now the section's coming up, let me try to do a roll or look at this section, it looks perfect for an air reverse, let me try an air reverse. And those thoughts that keep going through your mind actually slow you down in the way that you are going to want to be hitting these sections or the thought process that you're gonna go through before hitting this section. So now that I've explained a little bit on what today's video is gonna be about, I wanna take you guys through a little bit of a video analysis on some of my waves and my thought process going into each of these waves. These waves are not the best waves in the world, and they are not the most perfect waves in the world, but this will give you an idea of where my mind is at and what I am actually looking for before I start to actually even engage on the rail and look down the line and just see exactly what this wave is gonna do and how it's gonna change and what moves you can possibly do off certain sections. So let's get into me just explaining a little bit more on my thought process when I am paddling for a bunch of different waves. So right from the start, we're gonna just freeze frame here and I'm gonna show you a couple things that I'm looking at before I was paddling onto the wave. First off, you can kind of see this foam ball pushing across here. This is a wedge, so a little bit different to kind of explain to you guys, but you can see the foam ball starting to push across, which means I'm on the corner of the wedge in the perfect position. As I start to paddle here, you can see when I look down the line, and we'll freeze it again here. There's not really that much going on. Looking down the line, there's no real wave coming, but what I could see out of this wave was a triangle starting to form exactly where I was wanting to go. Now, 
When you look again, you can see that starting to build up and I was just kind of sitting and slowing myself down and then you can see I engage the rail here and really push forward and see this bowl and backflip off that section and I actually landed on the foam there, kind of lost my board a little bit, but this was the wave that really made me want to make this video for you guys. So here's another wave. If we freeze frame again here, you can actually see, although there is that thing on the screen, I think it's a little water droplet on the lens, but you can see another very big corner that I am on. I have got a lot of speed coming into this one and you can actually see that whole corner building up there. And as I keep going on this, I look down the line and there's two things that I notice here. There's a lump that is kind of forming a little bit further down the screen where you can see there. And then further along, it's really starting to turn towards me. So I keep going on this and actually slow myself down by dragging my legs a bit to get into this barrel. And that second section that we could see a little bit further down, you can see it just starting to feather a little bit underneath that little water droplet. But that was the point where I knew this wave was going to kind of close on me. So what I did was I straightened out straight after the barrel and then looked up again to see if I could find any more sections to go on. Unfortunately, this wave didn't quite go where I wanted it to go and it didn't throw enough and I ended up trying to do a reverse off the top here, but very unsuccessful wave landing on the top and kind of getting sucked back down. So this wave here is away from Hawaii and although this is pipeline and the reef is obviously underneath me, this actually went onto a sandbar. So that's why I wanted to really explain this and just show something to you guys. So on this wave, you can see I'm not in the position for a barrel and my eyes are set down the line. You can see there's a little lump starting there and that was something that I was really keen to go and hit. As you can see, we're drawing the line down towards the section now and you can actually see that part of the wave starting to build up as we freeze that frame again. You can see that build up of, of foam and the wave really starting to pitch. And as I start to engage the rail here, that section that I thought I was gonna hit was a little bit further down. I actually had to adjust my line to hit the section that was a little bit closer. You can see this one starting to build up a little bit more. And as I run into it, you can actually see the foam starting to foam over here. And this gives you options for two separate moves, either an invert or a reverse. And again, you can do backflips, you can do different things, but going through my mind right now was an invert. And as I went up to it, you can see the projection was there. It was out into the flats and then just landing on the, on the explosion coming up and actually allowed for quite a clean landing and coming out of the foam straight after that, which I was super stoked about. This wave here is from Dunes in uh, Cape Town. And you can see me, I'm paddling for this wave. I'm gonna freeze the frame here again. And we're just gonna look at something. Where the sunlight is hitting, you can kind of see this is where you want to be. This is where the, the point of the wave is, where it's got its most power and you are gonna get your most speed from. So looking at that section, that's kind of where I wanted to get to before I started going on this wave. You can see these two surfers both looking at me if I'm going or not. But as I pushed onto this wave, I've got a hell of a lot of speed. I'm, I'm kicking as hard as I possibly can and trying to get as much speed because I actually wanted to get down to this end section here. You can see the foam ball. That's a perfect ramp for a reverse. And that's exactly where my mind was at. Yes, there is a barrel incoming, but my mind was really at the end of this wave. And you see, I went quite low on the bottom turn here. I didn't hug the, the, the top of the wave because then you need to slow down. So I actually got all the way to the bottom and you can see the lip is really close to me when it lands next to me and getting so much speed through that section. And now my eyes are on this end part. My eyes are really on this end section to see which part of the wave is gonna come up. And this is a real quick movement that you've got to have when you're looking at this part of the wave. You've really got to focus on where that little section is gonna push out and where you can actually hit the wave and as you can see here, I go down and that little part sits up there and allows me to hit the reverse and land in the foam. And I kind of get a little bit gobbled up here, but get spat out at the end and a really, really sick wave that I was super stoked on getting. So this last wave here, we're gonna freeze the frame on the start of the wave and just show you guys exactly what I'm looking at here. So this is actually at Caves again 
it is a wedging wave. So that means that you want to get to the highest point of the wave in order to get the most speed pushing through the bottom turn. So I actually paddle more towards the section and then as you can see, I turn to look back to see what the wave is gonna do. And I can see that there's a couple things happening here. The barrel isn't really coming, there's not much happening. So I just throw it into a forward spin here and then I stall, I hold a lot of my speed and I wait for that end section. If we freeze the frame here, this is the section I am looking at. That part of the wave is really where I'm focused on because that's where I wanna hit. That is where the reverse is gonna come from, where you can dissipate a lot of your, your speed into the wave and allow you to actually get pushed off and do a reverse. So now on my mind is a reverse and as we get closer and closer, you can see it starting to foam and that allows for a perfect launch pad to throw a reverse off. And as I go up to it here, I hit the, that perfect section and flip it into reverse and then come around for a nice clean wave and a completed wave. So guys, that brings us to the end of today's video and I hope you guys have just understood and kind of followed on with exactly what I am trying to explain about choosing waves and what moves to do on these waves. Again, I cannot stress this enough that this is very much down to experience and consistently riding waves and seeing what these waves do. So after this video, get out there, try these different things and see what works for you. Even if you pick up a small thing like looking down the line and kind of seeing the section that you wanna hit and where you wanna go, is probably the key to getting these moves done more and more frequently. I have a really cool project coming up this week and I will hopefully be putting a lot more stuff out on the community page. If you guys aren't on that community page already, please go and check it out. It is on my channel and there is a bunch of cool stuff on there. If you guys wanna join onto the membership program, that program is still available and you guys can go and check it out whenever you feel the need. If you like today's video, please give it a thumbs up as well as subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell to get notified first. And I will see you in the next video.